So right now, we are going to see another example of constructing a force diagram. In this situation, we are to draw a force diagram for the skier who slides with negligible friction. Now, whenever you see negligible friction, that means that we can ignore the force of friction acting on the object. So what we have here is going to already be step zero drawn for us. We have identified our system and its surroundings. That has been drawn for us, so we can go on to step one of constructing our free body diagrams. That is to draw that system boundary. This blue dashed line is just around the skier, and that is going to be showing what our system is. So that way we can shrink it down to a single dot. Then we make sure that our coordinate axis is aligned with the actual motion of the skier. Now, for the most part, we have been seeing just a typical x, y axis, where x is left and right, y is up and down, and we have not needed to do anything with that coordinate system in order to align with the motion of our system. However, in this situation, this skier, they are not moving left, right. They are not moving up, down. Instead, what they're doing is they're moving down and to the left. That might be a bit hard to communicate with a free body diagram where we do not rotate these axes. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate these axes in order to match the motion of the skier. So this way, this x-axis, which is denoted in red, aligns with the motion of the skier. And then the y-axis is just going to be perpendicular to that motion of the skier. That doesn't change how we draw our forces though. The first, first force that I would always recommend drawing is the force of gravity. It's the force of gravity acting on the skier by the earth. This is still pointing straight down, even though we have rotated our coordinate system. The force of gravity is still pulling straight down because the coordinate system is just allowing us to orient our thinking and our construction of the forces to explain the motion along that coordinate system or along the axes. Now, the other forces we have acting on the skier. There's no other non-contact forces. There's nothing magnetic or electric going on in this situation. So we just need to see what is in contact with the skier. What is crossing the system boundary? In this case, the surface is going to be interacting with the skier. That means we're going to have a normal force. That is that push up force on our system by the surface. In this case, we're gonna label that force normal on skier by ground. Now, I did just say that it was going to be an upward push. Now, that does not necessarily mean that the force has to be directly upward. Rather, it's going to be perpendicular or normal with the surface it is in contact with. So this skier is going to be in contact with the surface. The surface is then pushing up on the skier. So that way that push up is perpendicular to the surface. This is why our normal force is up and to the right, or because we rotate the coordinate system directly on our y-axis. Now, nothing else besides the air is going to be in contact with the skier. Now, unless we have a really good reason to believe that the air would be exerting a force on the skier, we can assume that it too is going to be negligible, just like the force of friction would be negligible. What that means is there's nothing else in contact with a skier, nothing else that crosses the system boundary that could be exerting a force on our system. So therefore, this is just going to be the two forces acting on our system. So I'm removing the coordinate system now, so that way we can just focus on those two forces. However, if we were to just look at those two forces and those two forces alone, it does not necessarily reflect that this skier is accelerating down and to the right, that they are accelerating as they move down the hill. That is where we need to start breaking up some of those forces into its off-axis components into on-axis components. Hopefully this will allow us to explain the motion of the skier. So the reason why I'm breaking up the force of gravity into its components rather than the normal force is if we were to go back and look at that coordinate system, I would recommend breaking up the off-axis force into its components. In this case, that would be the force of gravity. So force of gravity would have 
well, just one interaction with the skier, pulling it straight down to the center of the Earth. However, we are also going to be explaining it in terms of its motion along our coordinate axes. Part of the force of gravity is keeping the skier on the hill. Another part of it is pulling them down the hill. That's going to be the force gravity y and force gravity x, respectively. Now, even though I did draw it this way, like it is a right triangle, that just allows me to size the length of my components. I need to actually draw that force gravity x, as though it originates from our system, because a force needs to be applied to the system to have an effect on the system. If it's down here, it looks like we have that component applied to some area beneath the system, which would not have an effect on the system. That's why I shifted up to show its effect on the system. At this point, I have taken that single off-axis force and broken up into its components qualitatively. So I can get rid of that original force because we've now explained its effects. We, orig we still have that original force gravity there, not its components, but the way that we're working with it right now is to just show its effects. So, our summation equations. The summation equation along the x-axis would just be force gravity dash x. There's no force balancing out this force gravity x, so that means that the system would be accelerating along the x-axis, which is what we would expect to see for a skier moving down a frictionless hill. The other summation equation we have, sum of the force y is equal to force normal minus force gravity y. We're saying that's going to be equal to zero newtons. The reason for this is it's probably safe to assume that the skier is staying on the hill. They're not accelerating along our y-axis. So those forces need to be balanced. So our force normal and the force gravity y need to be balanced. What that means is if we had not already drawn the force gravity y and the force normal as the same size, this would be a chance for us to rescale one of those two forces in order to explain conceptually, qualitatively, and visually that those two forces were the same magnitude. Now, despite those being our summation equations, they correspond with this force diagram, where there's only two interactions with our skier. The interaction between the earth and the skier, which is that force of gravity, and the interaction between the skier and the ground, which is that force normal. Even though this would be a way for us to explain the acceleration of the skier, this right here is the actual force diagram for the skier.